Hello everybody, Roland Dell here. Um, <clears throat> I wanted to do a little talk about one of my favorite subjects, uh, false Christs, false prophets, antichrists. And I'd like to say that um, it's not always what people think it is. Uh, it's not always, you know, the Kool-Aid drinking uh, cult leader that uh, most people, um, uh, the wild fanatic, you know, that uh, is totally um, off base and, uh, you know, twists the scriptures to mean something other than it says. And um, so that's what I wanted to do a little talk about tonight. Now, I've been a Christian, I don't know, since I was a teenager. Uh, as many of you know, I worked in street ministry and was taught by a man holding three doctorate degrees. Uh, I have been a deacon in the church and I um, surpassed uh, the elders. Of, I, know, I took the part of elders training, although I wasn't made an elder. And then uh, I went out and went to get myself independently ordained and uh, a couple, three days after my uh, ordination, my heart stopped in army or survival training and I had Jesus Christ pushing next to me. But if you go to my, well, it's not around anymore, but if you go, if you were to visit, to have visited my uh, Lightship Ministries, Vessels of Light for Christ, when I got out of the Coast Guard, that's what I read in devotional. And the next day, the captain called me up for a job on the light ship. And everything that I speak about in my life um, is from personal experiences uh, in the Lord Jesus Christ working uh, in me. And, uh, you know, I did have a lot of uh, Reformed Bible teaching all my life. But now the Lord is, uh, he's built on that teaching uh, so that what, um, lives inside of me, him, the Lord Jesus Christ, in the form of the Holy Spirit, uh, is starting to make sense. And I'm, I'm starting to understand the scriptures like I've never understood them before. I'm starting to understand why I have felt suppressed by many who claim his name, uh, and I never understood before. And so, um, this is what I wanted to do tonight is talk about people because I have been in the chaplaincy for some years now, uh, work with ministers and deacon and elders and that, you know, these type of, uh, uh, church people, uh, established people. And I have had a lot of, uh, contact with people that are, uh, you know, much better educated than myself, but I've always noticed a difference between ones that I, um, kind of come beside me and uh, um, help me and accept me a as apart from those who um, are established in the world and, and want to just kind of brush me off and not have anything to do with me. And the difference is, I believe, is spirit. What spirit is somewhat of one John 4 test. We know them by their spirit. We'd have to discern what spirit is this person of. And to my surprise, shock, and horror, a lot of people that claim the name of the Lord and that have done uh, years of studying in uh, systematic theology seminaries, um, really, their hearts are not hard after the Lord. Their hearts are hard after their organization or um, <clears throat> their careers. And... Uh, they won't ever go against the institution which employs them and or you know the uh, yeah I guess that's a good way to put it the institution which employs them or the or the group of people that they've uh, graduated with because they want to be part of the world the world system the system church the world church and in the end days you know, Jesus said that uh, many will have a form of godliness, but not the power thereof. And he said to stay away from men like these. And also we know that the passage uh, where it says, Lord, Lord, didn't we cast out demons? Didn't we prophesy? Didn't we do all these wonderful things in your name? And Jesus says, depart from me. I never knew you. So what's the Bible talking about? It's talking about 
uh, people who claim the name of Jesus Christ, claim to represent Christ within their lives. But yet the Lord says, I never knew you. And that knowing there is a personal knowing, uh, a personal uh, relationship, like in the marriage union, which the Apostle Paul spoke about. I don't want to get diverted down that path other than to say that I know that I have that because there, there's too many um, things that I have never uh, sought after or tried to do in my life, with, which just fell together for me because of the fact that I am the Lord's and he has chosen to work in me and teach me things, even though I'm maybe not that well-spoken or, you know, um, uh, respected in the world like a lot of folk might be. So I wrote a I wrote a, a piece of paper today, a piece of paper today, something that I wanted to uh, put into print, but I think I'm going to do a video and said instead, excuse me, and this is called endearing oneself to the world in the hope that some may come to Christ is an evangelical ritual which has been performed for over thousands of years. Now they all love to quote the scripture uh, where Jesus goes to the 11 disciples and says the great commissioning says go into the world and preach the gospel to every man woman and child well this is fine if the if you are sent it doesn't mean that every Tom Dick and Harry has been sent to do that which men take it on themselves and meaning that the church doesn't takes it on themselves the meaning now this is our great calling our great commission we have to go preach the gospel to everybody that's fine. I mean, that's really only academic because you can preach the gospel to everybody. I have no problem with preaching the gospel to everybody. But you should be led of God when you preach the gospel, when you share your heart with somebody. Because it's the Spirit working. Uh, it's only the Spirit that brings people to Christ. The Holy Spirit that transforms people. It's not of our own flesh and our fleshly efforts. But this is what has been happening for you know a couple thousand years since... Uh, the organized church came into existence, which I'm starting to believe is the beast church, a false church, because the true church is only Christ within us. So men take a Bible and they start to, they start to say, oh, look, this applies to us. But does it apply to you? Are you the Lord's? Do you hear? Are you called? Are you sent? And uh, we all know that the uh, 11 disciples were sent directly for Christ to do it. So they were also empowered to do it. It wasn't just a, I don't know, a sign up for Jesus thing, like I've said before in some of my videos. Uh, say these words. Go down this. Go down this. Uh, this. This list here. Check it off. And if you've done all these things, you're saved. That's that's all. That's all flesh. That's all man's effort. Because God is the one who saves people from sin, not men. And I'm sorry. And this is a, this is a, a misconception that's in the church, that we can go out and bring people to Jesus, bring all the lost to Jesus. We can do nothing, the Bible tells us, and the whole Bible holds together. All the scriptures hold together. Um, it doesn't conflict. You have Arminians, you have Calvinists, you have Universalists. They all seem to be battling points of uh, biblical doctrine around. But if you know the Lord Jesus Christ, God quickens that scripture to you, and you understand you can put it in perspective. Because, dear friends, if you are a true follower of the Lord Jesus Christ, a true disciple of the Lord, the Lord will teach you what the scriptures means. You don't need man-made organizations starting all the way back to the time of Constantine to teach you things. Come on, do you think the original disciples needed that or had that? Certainly not. They were taught of God. The Bible said they will all be taught of God. My sheep hear my voice. And the thing is, man, Satan, tries to counterfeit that. And you cannot act independently of God. You cannot teach people into salvation, teach people into Christ. It is a work that God does in individuals. So without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and uh, read some more of uh, what I started to write. Um, <clears throat> so endearing oneself to the world in the hope that many will come to Christ, the evangelical ritual, which was, has been performed for over over the centuries, I put over millennium. I don't know if millennium's right or not, but anyway. However, a true disciple of Jesus Christ 
only operate in the leading of the Holy Spirit to preach the gospel to the lost and not in the flesh. In addition, performing healings and other miracles as the disciples were instructed to do as part of the ministry while on earth. All of those men were sent of God, not only preached the good news of Jesus Christ to the lost, but moved in the power of God to represent who they were, but more importantly, who Christ was within them as a spiritual ambassador, having God's blessing and authority in order to demonstrate such power. The reason the power of God is so rarely seen today is because many who claim to represent the Lord Jesus Christ are, for one, not sent of God, but merely are operating in the flesh, or, worse yet, do not know him and have never known him, um, only all about him as taught to them by other men. Most true believers who have started with Christ have departed or taken a divergent path from him, known as the broad road, and operating in religious flesh and independence of self in a role the Apostle John called Antichrist. These are people that start off with the Lord Jesus Christ, and they have a zeal. They have, you know, uh, you know, I can, uh, you know, I'm, uh, I don't know, I can lead people to Jesus. I can do all these things, and they become antichrist because they want people to follow them. They are all false or alternative Christ. And if you have the Lord Jesus Christ in you, you can only follow Him in spirit by listening in obedience to the Holy Spirit within you. Now, the Bible's fine, but the problem is people teach the Bible who oftentimes don't even know the Lord Jesus Christ. So how can they teach in the spirit of truth if they don't have the spirit of truth residing within them? The, the answer to that is they can't. Okay, so I'm going to go on and read a little bit more. Every churchman, churchman worth his salt knows that Jesus taught that he was a servant to others before himself. Yet the authoritarian church structuring, systematic theology, runs completely contrary to the teachings of the Lord when taken as a whole within the scriptures. Deacons are servants of others first, putting themselves second to others. Then we have the biblical example of what an elder should be, normally moving up through the ranks, so to speak, as a deacon first, then a teaching elder into a pastoral position within systematic theologies. <clears throat> Yet, nowhere in the scriptures, with the exclusion of the Old Testament, do we find priest and layman in the body of Christ. With the exception that we are all high priests, if found in Christ, with no other mediator between God and man, because of what Christ accomplished on the cross doesn't have to do with us. This all has to do with dependency of walking in the Holy Spirit of Jesus Christ if we know him uh, because of what he did for us on the cross. If not, get out of here. You know, I, I'd much rather have somebody uh, say they weren't a believer than pretend they are and not be. But this is one of Satan's tricks. I'm going to read. I'm going to finish up here. To add to this equation... Or take away uh, the action of God's love on the cross is biblical heresy and is forbidden in the scriptures. So why do men add and take from the Bible? The answer is because they will not listen to God nor endure sound doctrines, often because they are not the Lord's people or are but babes in Christ. Or worse yet, they have decided to act independent of the Holy Spirit's leading. And when you act independently of God's leading, you are in sin. Because the Christian life is based on dependency of the Lord's leading within you. Dependency on Christ. You know, I almost died uh, in, in the surf. I told this story before when I got out of the Coast Guard. Um, and I was a very strong swimmer in my flesh. I could swim a couple miles with uniform on. And I went way down the, down the strip past the jetties and... And I was crying out to God, nothing was happening. The Lord spoke to my to, to my heart, and he said, he said, you can do nothing. And right as that uh, dropped into my spirit, the, the wave dropped in front of me, and there the lifeguards were tattered together and pulled me to the shore. So, again, 
everything that I share with people on these are, are uh, personal events from my life on how I know and function in the Lord Jesus Christ. And most of the church uh, men that I've been um, associated with do not have a personal testimony in their lives, a spiritual personal testimony of the Lord Jesus Christ uh, working in them. And if they do, um, they usually have a hard time, uh, especially nowadays, fitting into uh, into uh, certain denominations or whatever. In fact, uh, one of the men that uh, helped to credit me and uh, in my continuing education in the Bible, um, was, uh, was with the assemblies of God and they, they put him out of it because he, uh, dared to go to different churches and speak about Christ. And they didn't like the way that his denomination didn't like the way he was doing it. So I just wanted to interject that. Um, let's see, where was I? One of the, uh, most visible traits of a false prophet or antichrist is one of endearing themselves to the world. Jesus said, love not the world. Okay? You're to love him. That's why it says, um, unless you hate your mother, father, sister, brother, uh, husband, wife, uh, even your lo own life, you can't be my disciple. And that means a strong dispreference for the world doesn't matter to you. The only thing that matters to you is listening to your heavenly father uh, in heaven and, and moving in that. Now, of course, um, a Christian will help people in need when they come upon them and that type of thing. You know, that's part of the nature uh, of, of a child of God is their, their hearts have been regenerate and they do have God's love. But it's not something they do independently. They don't have to go set up uh, mission boards and, and you know, uh, let, let's ship caterpillars overseas and let's do this and let's do that. Uh, unless the Lord has not uh, truly directed them to do it and give them the uh, ability to do it. And if he has, I believe God would, would uh, provide for that. So I wanted to say, I'm going to reiterate on this. One of the visible traits for most false uh, prophets or antichrists is one to endearing themselves to the world, to the world's people uh, and their perspective sheep. It rarely, ha it rarely has anything to do with their love for the truth nor following Jesus Christ. Rather, it has everything to do with religious zeal, pride, and appearing important within the world. The very things Jesus said not to seek after these men are doing. And they're doing it in the name of Christ. And I can tell you, I, I know chaplains that uh, uh, they're very well-educated men. And they, they, can, they can rattle through their Bible like nobody's business. You know, they, it's like putting me through the meat grinder the way they can memorize the scriptures and all. But th that is all, all of, the nat of their natural abilities. You can do that in the flesh. But the spirit thereof is all about endearing themselves. Or everybody will love them. Oh, we preach love of Christ to everybody. Everybody love me. Aren't I a wonderful minister? But the, but the, the brother or sister who dares stand up and says, No, are you being led of the Lord? Are you following Christ? Um, they're the ones that uh, come under persecution. This is why Jesus said, if they hated me, they will hate you also. Same with the, the disciples, because we who have Jesus Christ within us are the ones that Jesus says they have, you know, they have the power, we have the power thereof. The other people have a form of godliness, but not the power thereof. And what is that? It's simply uh, having and moving in the power of the Holy Spirit. Now, I really wish, I really wish that uh, someday soon that the people who were actually the Lord's, who are actually born again of spirit, who are walking with Christ in obedience, would be able to speak forth in power, and there would be no doubts in the mind of people of who was, who was the Lord's and who wasn't. Because the one that wasn't, it, it, it would simply just, it wouldn't have any effect at all. And this is why I started off in this uh, in this video talking about um, when they went to, when they were sent to preach the gospel, they did it in power. They had healings and miracles and uh, to show who they were uh, that God had indeed given them authority, and it wasn't just of themselves. But unfortunately, for a couple thousand years, um, the only authority uh, that men have been given is from an organizational or carnal um, 
position, I'm afraid to say. And that's not to say there hasn't been men of God and women of God that have moved in the power of the Lord. Um, <clears throat> and, and they could tell that they were the Lord's. But throughout human history, um, they're very few. They're very few. And this is why the scripture says God used the foolish things of the world to confound the wise, the weak things to confound the strong. This is all based on dependency on following the Lord Jesus Christ, not how well we can do public speaking and not how much the gray matter works in our, in our Bible memorization. No, it's a matter of following and moving as led by the Lord. And I'm starting to discover that there are very few people that have the ability to do that. Um, either uh, they're not born again or they just plain out refuse to listen. They will not be brought low enough to follow Jesus Christ. God bless your friends and be careful people uh, who, um, who name the name of Christ and want to endear themselves to you because most, most likely they're just trying to get you to follow them or where their organization. No. Learn to listen and follow the Lord Jesus Christ in and of yourself, in your heart. Because if the Holy Spirit is within you, he will teach you the truth. He will reveal all things to you. And this is the power of uh, being a true disciple of the Lord. God bless. Bye.